Hello, my name is Louise Henriksen and I'm a historian and museum curator at the Viking Ship Museum in Roskilde, Denmark. And I've been invited by Archaeology Now to tell you about the method that we use to gain insight into the maritime culture of the Viking Age. Here at the Viking Ship Museum, the main attraction is five shipwrecks from late Viking Age. They were found out in Roskilde Fjord as part of a barrage to prevent enemy war fleets from entering the, the fjord and attacking the city. But it wasn't just five Viking ships, it was five different ship types and they give us a multifaceted impression of everything from shipbuilding and navigation to trade, defense and warfare in the Viking Age. At the museum we consider every ship a source of extensive and complex cultural historical knowledge. The ships were built and used by people who left innumerable traces. The shape of the ship tells us about their function, the waters they were built to sail, and the boat owner's wishes for their sailing capabilities. The wood fiber structures tells us which particular part of the tree was used for specific ship parts. And the tool marks tells us how the boat builders used his axes, planes and drills. To read these traces, we use a method called maritime experimental archaeology, which consists of two elements. One is reconstructing the ship in full scale using the same tools, materials and techniques as in the Viking Age. And the second is testing that reconstruction in the same waters the original ship was built to sail a thousand years ago. This allows us to explore how and why the Vikings built ships. Everything from organization at the boatyard, choosing materials and bringing them into the building site, to hierarchy and rules and life and board and much more. Working like this is an internet disciplinary process and it requires cooperation between people with very different backgrounds. Historians and archaeologists, ships engineers and architects, boat builders and other craftsmen like rope makers and sail makers, and of course sailors. They all bring different knowledge and different experience to the table and therefore they ask different questions. The process begins by measuring all the original parts and drawing them on drafting foil. Then a ship reconstructor creates a 3D cardboard model uh, in 1 to 10 scale to try and recreate the shape and the lines of the original hull. That model forms the basis of a reconstruction drawing that the boat builders use when actually building the ship. Building the ship can take several years depending on the size of the ship, the questions asked and therefore the experiments that we weave into the boat builders work. The finished reconstruction doesn't give us any absolute truth or one answer. It's a hypothesis, so it's more a um, way of identifying possible answers. You can almost call it a historical representation uh, that helps us look at the material with new eyes, interpret in different ways and very often also ask new questions. When sailing, the reconstruction is an experimental lab that, that informs us if anything doesn't function, but it also gives an, us an insight into the human aspect of past know-how, knowledge and abilities. But for these information and insights to have any cultural historical value, the ships need to be sailed in changeable weather conditions, tested again and again, and preferably on the same sea routes the Vikings took across open sea of when, when covering distances along the coastlines. Our most ambitious archaeological project to date was building and sailing the Sea Stallion from Glendalough, a reconstruction of the 30 meter long Irish warship Skulelo II. And it's actually the Sea Stallion that I'm aboard right now. The ship is a war machine built to carry many men at high speed, but it's a bold design, both heavy and strong enough to carry a sail of 112 square meters, but also long and light enough to be rowed by 60 men. In 2007 and 2008, we sailed the Sea Stallion from Roskilde to Dublin and back with 65 train crew members on board in order to test the ship in the same waters Skullo 2 was built to sail. The purpose was to test the reconstruction, the ship's sailing capabilities and the organisation and logistics of the crew and life on board. And we quickly learned that the ship like the Sea Stallion or Skullo 2 really shaped its crew. Conditions on board required an almost military-like discipline, command structures and learned routines. But the most important lesson 
was that we learned about the necessary link between the balance of the ship, the ship's ability to beat to windward, and the positioning of the crew. Skulelo 2 was built for warrior transport, and every man on board had a purpose, no matter his place in the hierarchy. Every one on board acted as live ballast. On long stretches with steady wind, the ship could be handled by a few people. But if the wind increased, the ship needed to change its position of the sail or to be rowed, more men were needed, almost half the crew. And if there was a stronger wind and heavy seas, the entire crew was needed. And they would place themselves in left side of the ship, the side facing the wind, to act as a counterpart to the sail and the rig and prevent the ship from capsizing. Furthermore, the crew was ordered forward or aft in the ship when changing course to help force the ship around. We learned that the positioning of the crew was key to how well a long ship like this performs. That success of a long and narrow warship in the Viking Age was rooted in years of technological development, of trial and error, and gaining experience by sailing on open sea. It's based on an idea of a perfect synergy between man, ship and sea. And it's only when testing the reconstructed ships on the realistic conditions, sailing them with the same seriousness and dedication as the Vikings, that we learn about the people and the culture. It's when doing that that we get a little glimpse of limitations and possibilities of a merchant or war fleet commander a thousand years ago. But where the Vikings sought new land, we seek new knowledge.